Today's episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron is sponsored by Audio Modern. Audio Modern offers a full suite of creative tools to generate infinite new rhythmic and musical ideas to kickstart inspiration in your next writing session. My new Playbeat expansion pack, Exea, is available now as a free download and promotion with Audio Modern. If you want to check out Playbeat along with my new free expansion, you can find that with the link down in the description. Howdy doody buckaroonies and welcome back to another episode of the Bing Bong Noise Make Sound Show. Recently I made an expansion pack for Audio Modern's Playbeat and it's out right now with that link right down there in the description. And because my brain is sort of locked in drum sound design mode, I figured it might be fun to make a video about some drum sound design techniques, but focus in on a couple of the weirder techniques I use when designing drum sounds that you can try out for yourself as your homework assignment for the week. So with that, let's pop on our adventure caps and get this party started. All right, so here we are with Playbeat. I've got my expansion loaded up with one of the presets and it sounds like this, just to give you an idea of the base canvas we're gonna work from here. So I really wanted to aim for nice, tight, techie electronic drums to give that sort of electronic cinematic edge to things. So to demonstrate these in context, I've got this sort of chill TV theme song intro bed thing and the drums sound like this. So nice, tight, and snappy, but also subdued and work really well in a mix. So let's dive right into sound design tip number one, using hysteresis to generate texture. Glitch Machine's hysteresis here is a buffer mangling sort of fancy delay effect. And honestly, like a lot of the other Glitch Machine stuff, what exactly it's doing is sort of a mystery to me at times. And I think maybe that's intentional. But one sort of fun quirk with it I've noticed is that it's really good at generating little bits of ear candy, especially in things like drum loops. So here I just hit the random button a bunch of times until something interesting started to happen. If I mix this in 100% wet, it sounds like this. So there's some really interesting stuff happening. And if we blend this in real low with the original drum loop, it sounds really cool. I just love those little details it adds, and this is such a fast way to make your drums sound a bit more alive and interesting. As sort of a side tip, one really neat way to enhance these little details is with something like Kilohertz Dynamics here. This is a upwards and downwards compression plugin, and one of the interesting artifacts that this generates is a natural sort of side chain, because when it's playing, it sounds like a compressor, but when it's quiet, it's lifting up the noise floor and all those little details we just generated. So so if we bring this in on top of that little hysteresis texture we've mixed in super subtly, you'll hear that it starts to really bloom and explode in between the drum hits. Which sounds like such a complicated sound designy drum thing, but really we've just added two plugins. That brings us to drum sound design tip number two, using hysteresis textures to generate percussion loops. Using noise to design drums is a pretty age old trick and using that same hysteresis trick and leaving the mix at 100%, you can get some really interesting bits of what I like to call audio vomit. And what you can do is then use this to create interesting percussive loops by chopping out little interesting bits, putting them in a drum sampler, or the way I do it is to run it through something like GateLab. GateLab is a free TransGate plugin, but the interesting twist with it is it generates new patterns over and over and over if you use this infinity button here. So I just ran this a couple times until I found a groove I liked and locked it in by disabling this. So if I bring this GateLab on top of that audio vomit texture, we now have this. which sounds a lot more like a drum groove. Putting that through a little bit of EQ to clean it up, we now have this. Just sort of a nice chill top line. And if we bring that in against our original drums,
We've got a much more interesting drum groove cooking without, again, a whole ton of effort. Drum design tip number three, vocoder noise grooves. This is a really popular technique in techno and dark techno and things like that, and there's a really great video from Underdog Electronic Music School that you can watch that goes into this whole thing in a bit more detail. But basically, we're using a vocoder with noise as a carrier and the drums as a modulator, and this creates these big, noisy, cinematic-sounding drums that sit really well underneath another groove. First off, we need a drum groove. So within Playbeat, I actually just dragged out the stems and chopped up the kick and moved the pattern around a little bit so it's not the exact same pattern. Nothing really too fancy, but it's going to get pretty cool pretty quick. First up in the chain, there's that really high clicky annoying sound, so I just filtered that off and now we've got this. I just used the stock Bitwig vocoder here and used the filters to just filter off all the super low rumbly stuff and kind of focus it in. I dropped the band count down to eight bands and used a really long release of almost two seconds. This is where we get our noise groove from. Taming this down, I grabbed another filter and made it really, really dark. And that should sit much better under the original drum groove. We've already gone through what GateLab is and does, so the only thing that's really going on here is it's generating a new groove every time it cycles. So, running all that together, we now get this. To give this a bit of context, I'm going to play the original drum groove, and we're just going to fade in that dark vocoder loop. So that sounds pretty cool. We could even take off the gate lab and let it be a bit more dark techno-y. And we've built up a cool new loop to sit underneath our main loop. Drum design tip number four, the pull apart method. This is a trick a friend of mine showed me years ago. He used to experiment with warp modes in Ableton and take drum breaks and just slow them down a little bit. And they just sounded so much thicker and heavier. And I thought that this was really cool. So I just totally stole this from him. This is really simple to do. I just bounced out a copy of the play beat loop here. So this is just the full mix. And it's got those little hysteresis textures and stuff on it. And what we're going to do is stretch this out to a just sort of irregular length, but only extending it by at most two or three bars. Within your DAW, you'll want to experiment with the different warp modes, but the one you're really after is something like re-pitch here, which alters the pitch and time together. So if you shorten it, it gets higher in pitch, and if you stretch it out, it gets lower in pitch. This removes all those little grainy artifacts and makes things sound a bit more normal. But in this case, we're lowering the pitch by stretching the loop out and suddenly these drums end up feeling a lot heavier. So that's a really fast way to generate some new samples from the same sounds. From here, what you can do is zoom in and chop out all the bits you like. So maybe you like the sound of the kick and the snare and those glitchy hits take on sort of a different color to them and you can cut those out to make new samples to build a new drum groove. So that's what I've done down here in green. Putting that with our chill backing track we've made, you'll see that these drums fit in really, really nicely. Something about that just stretched and slowed drum sound works so well in those sorts of styles. Last but not least, tip number five, granular sample layering. This is another technique I picked up years ago. I have no idea where I learned this from, but I think artists like Mr. Bill do a lot of similar stuff. And this is a great way to add little bits of texture and motion to a drum sound that also complements it really well because you're using the same sound to create it. Moving this down, let's make all these tracks purple just so we can see what's going on here. So first off, I grabbed the snare from this slowed down version of this groove. Then I bounce that out with the reverb in it. 
What I then did is load that long reverb shot into a granular synth here. Bitwig does this inside of the sampler. Most DAWs have some kind of granular tool built in, but if you don't, you can use something like the free emergence plugin here to do more or less the same thing. To set this up, I use the playhead speed down to something really low, in this case about 15%, just so it's barely chugging along, a relatively large grain size of somewhere between maybe 30 to 100 milliseconds, and a lot of motion, or spray, or offset, or whatever your granular tool calls it so that the grain is just jumping around all over the place. I then just held down a note for a little while to create a long granular sound from that snare. Doesn't really matter what, and every time you play it, because of this spray or motion, it's going to be slightly different. And that's where the magic of this comes in. Zooming in here, we've got our original snare sound. And below that are two granular snare layers. I've got those really low in the mix and just pan them out hard left and hard right to get this really nice bit of pre-shifted, crunchy, swaggery texture to things. This is a really time-efficient technique for doing these sorts of things. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort, and it works really, really well for snares, or creating claps, or adding just bits of texture to things like maybe kicks, or hi-hats, or even percussion loops, where you want to add those little detailed bits of ear candy and pre-shifted movement without a whole ton of time invested in tweaking a bunch of little hits and messing with the timing too much. And there you have it. Five sort of weird sound design techniques for drums that I use myself all the time, and you have your homework to go out and try these for yourself this week. If you end up making something cool with any of the tips in this video, or find some new tips of your own, feel free to share them with me, because I always love to hear what you're out there doing and what you're up to. A very big thank you to Audio Modern for sponsoring today's video as well. Playbeat and my new expansion are available right now. That's linked down in the description below. And of course, thank you to you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome.